Okay, I'm here today at the Racing Post offices with Paul Keeley. Paul, thank you very much for agreeing to uh, talk to us. No problem. Now, as a tipster, do you feel much pressure and responsibility knowing that your followers are going to invest their hard earned in your selections? Uh, yes and no. I mean, obviously, there's a certain amount of professional pride that comes with tipping. I think it's more important uh, sometimes for me to tip a winner than it is for back a winner. Although, I will say that I back virtually everything I tip. I mean, I, I am a punter, first and foremost. I would say, you know, and I've always said to people who've asked on Twitter, I say, who else should we follow? And I, my answer is actually nobody. You know, I like to I like to come out and present a case and provide an argument. And if that you know, if you agree with that argument, then then go ahead and punt it. But if you think I'm talking nonsense, then don't be afraid to go your own way. Because look, at the end of the day, as a tipster, especially when you tip the sort of prices I tip at, uh, I'm going to be wrong 80% of the time at least. So you know, make your own mind up. Uh, but I I like to think I present a case uh, with a good argument. So how many hours? Of a, in a day, would you typically devote to uh, studying form? Uh, when I'm working on the tipping, I mean as many as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that I can I can do it casually as well as you know go r really delving in. I, I sit in front of the telly with my iPad, for, for example, in the evenings when I'm not working, and I'm still looking while I'm watching the TV and you know I'm, I'm watching videos. I just it's, it's a comfortable way to do it. But then in the morning, I'm up at my laptop. I like to you know I like to give it as much as I can. Basically, I watch loads and loads of videos. Um, it's, it's, it's the one advantage you've got when you work in the industry that you can spend loads of time because I think uh, when it comes to punters who have got you know, what I call real jobs, uh, they obviously don't have that time, but I do, so I spend as much as I can and I enjoy it anyway. So I was going to say, is it a passion then you'd be doing it anyway? Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, I joined the Racing Post in 1987 and it took me until 2010 before I actually transferred across to the racing side, but I've always followed racing more than, you know, I, I covered all sorts of sports for the Post to start with. Uh, but I've always been a racing man. Okay, you're one of these lucky people that, that've got all this stuff in your head and you can just pull a lot of it out? Uh, there's some in there. Um, I would say, obviously, when it comes to when it comes to the top racing, uh, which I like to think is, that's what I specialise in, then there's a lot of it in there already. Uh, you do need reminding, obviously, there's so many horses, uh, especially when it comes to the flat season, you've got all the two-year-olds uh, coming through, so you can't store everything. But I think I've got a fair amount of knowledge in there. Okay, so how seriously do you take your own punting and are you sort of successful over 12 months at it? Um, I punt, you know, I punt largely for fun. Uh, I would say I'm a huge punter. I'm probably a smaller punter now than I was uh, when I was a bad punter years ago, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I just, I thought when I joined the Racing Post I would be winning a fortune because I'd meet so many people in the know and it doesn't actually work like that. You know, I suppose most people, if, if they follow tips from supposed inside information that you know they find out they'll soon go skin because most of it is nonsense um so yeah i'm you know I'm, I'm i'm reasonably successful you know i've been stopped uh by a few i get cut by others uh i suppose you know i'll be perfectly honest and it'll annoy some people but i suppose the profile at the racing post allows me to have accounts when i might not have them um i don't i don't take the mickey i don't you know i don't go in and ask for hundreds you know five hundreds and thousands on uh, I bet at big prices anyway, generally, uh, uh, and, and they will get cut. Um, so I do, I do okay. Okay, we won't ask you exactly what sort of stakes you have, but do you use, do you put much value on staking plans with your own personal punting? Would you with my own personal it? punting, I've never ever shied away from the fact that I am terribly indisciplined. Uh, I always have been, and you know, we're 35 years into a punting career now, I don't suppose it's going to change very much. I mean, sometimes. You know, sometimes when I when I when I feel like I need to win well, with my own punting, I'll rein it in a little bit. But I have a, I have a lot of what you call action bets, just for the sake of it. I can't help myself. I I like it. I take you know, I take all the big stuff seriously. Uh, but if the telly's on, I'll end up having a couple of quid on you know whatever it is. So you've never actually considered being a full time punter? Well, I, I, you know, it's funny enough. You get this, and one of the things on Twitter, you get these people say, "If he was any good, he'd go pro." And what they don't realise, first of all, is that professional punters work harder than everybody. You know what I mean? There's some sort of idea that they're just sitting on a yacht somewhere making money, and it's absolute nonsense. I've, I've met a couple, like you know, and they're afraid to go on holiday in case they miss something. You know what I mean? And you know, they really, really work hard. Well, we, we all know Neil Channing. Neil Channing probably expends more calories trying to run around shops getting on than I do. You know, in in a week. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a case of there's that much work to be done, and I can get paid to do it as well. Right? You know, so. You know, I, I've I've been lucky enough to work for the Racing Post for thirty one years, and it, it it's not a job. Well, you know, so you know, I'm happy as I am. 
So when you sit, they get down to the nitty gritty of um, form now, because I'm interested myself in this, what would be the hardest part of unraveling a race? You sit down, you lay the paper out, whatever it is you do, there's the race, where do you start? What's the hardest part of it? I don't know if you say there is any hard part. There's just a way to start and a, you know, and, and a way to work your way through. And what I've always tried to do is try and find a favourite first. Um, and you know, there's various ways you can do it. You can watch videos, you can look at ratings, you can, you know, you see form figures. I mean, it can be very obvious. You've got a horse with three months next to its name trained by John Gosden. You can be pretty damn sure it's going to be fab. But you work around what you think the best horse is on form and the one that all punters are going to go for because, you know, that's what happens. And, and then I try to find out you know, to think to myself, can I get this beat? Uh, you know, and then I delve into as I look at, you know, I, I look at the racing post ratings on the race card. I always, I always change the um, order of the card to to the top racing post rating because it gives me an idea of what our handicappers reckon. Uh, this is before they've tweaked them for their own tips as well, because you've got to remember that it's a, it's a tipping service and a rating service. They will look at uh, their ratings and decide to themselves, well, I don't think this one can do it on the ground, etc. Uh, conditions aren't right so I like to look at the pure ratings before they do it so first as soon as the decks come out those ratings are on there uh, and then just work away you know chip ground uh, trip trainer everything really I mean just keep keep looking you know I spend ages is there something that you like to find about a horse in a race that you think other people don't spot that it's ah uh, there's something. Is there, is there anything there? Yeah, well, this is this is one when it come, comes to racing post ratings. One thing, I, one thing I like doing right, is watching a horse's racing post rating go up while its handicap comes down because they look like they're out of form. They might be running fifth, sixth, seventh, that sort of thing, but they're actually slowly improving their RPI and it's getting closer to the, to where the handicap mark is. And you know that that, that a horse is becoming well enough handicapped and running well enough to, to maybe do it. And they can, sometimes they can be massive prices. There was one. Um, uh, oh, it, it wasn't a case of a handicap going down, but there was a horse called Eugenio that won at Newmarket um, uh, a few weeks ago. He was um, he had actually run the best racing post rating of any of the horses last time out, and it was the outsider a lot when the market came up. It just didn't make sense, you know. And so just look at little things like that. How well have they been running? And don't just look at form figures. Look at the numbers. Okay, you say obviously if you're looking at something and there's an obvious favourite, but did, would you when you're looking at a race? Would you be looking at it with a completely open mind, or at least trying to? to oh, yeah, begin absolutely. With? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, my, my mo is to try and find decent price winners. You know, I always say to people that if I tipped up some shorties, which I did a little while ago, three shorties all lost. Uh, it actually, it actually embarrasses the hell out of me to be honest when when that happens. So I, I try, you know, I, I try and find an angle that someone might not have thought about. Uh, to get a decent price. I mean, it boils the pants off me betting at even money, that sort of thing anyway. So, uh, yeah, so that is my MO. So I, I've got a total open mind about what's going to win the race, but as soon as I've found out what the favourite is and what I think the price might be, I, I'll then go looking to see, well, hang on, how can I get this beat? Okay, there's plenty of ways these days to store like horses you've spotted and running that sort of thing. Do you keep a do you keep a notebook or do you think they sort of skew your judgment a bit? Uh, I'm the latter. I'm absolutely against notebooks. I hate being asked to provide horses to follow because I have to spend ages digging through uh, stats and, uh, and, uh, and and looking through our website trying to find some because I think if you write things down, if you make notes, you use a tracker, you're going to back that horse next time it runs. The amount of people said to me, well, I had to back that, I put it in my tracker. I can't have that, I can't do that. You've got to look at the whole race again. Now, I'm not saying there haven't been times when I've seen a horse and it's been stuck in my head and I know I'm going to back it. Of course you do, but you've got to take the time to look at every single horse. Otherwise, you're going to miss something that will really annoy you, like, you know, just because you've slavishly uh, devoted yourself to one that you put in your tracker. And would you quite often revisit the races via the videos after seeing something in the form book and thinking I'll go and check that out myself? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I look all the time. When I'm, when I'm studying form, I watch the videos, I'll read the analysis uh, that, that we've got, see whether I agree with the analysis. You know, I mean, I think, you know, if you've got the time, you've got to do that. I don't know, you know, when I, when I joined the racing post, you know, the guys who did the spotlights and, uh, and the tipping, they used to walk around with a great big rucksack over their shoulders with about 14 form books in it. I don't know how they did it, you know, nobody barely saw a race, but now you can see it all. It's all there at your fingertips. If you've got the time, that's the only thing. So what are your favourite types of races to study for picking winners? Um, I see it's funny, it's a bit, it's a bit perverse really, on the flat and nothing more than the sprint. 
I do like sprint handicaps. Uh, over jumps, uh, I'm, a, I'm a three mile chase man. <laughs> three mile handicap chase, which is a little bit weird. Um, but no, I mean, I like all sorts of races. I like the, I like the top end races. They just interest me more. Um, but I'm, I, I would say I specialise and, and I prefer handicaps to the, to the group races, probably because you can get more favourites beat. Is it physically possible these days to keep on top of all the forms so that you can study deeply enough to be successful? I, th I think if you want to be if you want to be a professional, you've got to specialise. Um, there are thousands and thousands of horses. You can't go through looking at every different type of race every single day. Uh, not unless you're an absolute genius. And I'm certainly not one of those. Um, so if you, if you want to actually make it pay, pick you know pick a division or whatever. I mean the, the BHA handicappers they have handicappers solely for one division. You know two miles, middle distance, sprinters, etc. Uh, so if that's what they do, then why, you know and you want to be a punter, why don't you do it? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I can't do that. I have to look at all different types of races, which is why I like to prefer looking at the top end. Uh, I'm lucky enough to do the tipping in the racing post on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, so I don't have to deal with the rubbish. Um, but I know a lot of people who do absolutely specialise on the lower class races and say that's where the money is to be made. So, you know, it, it's each of their own, but I do think you've got to cut it down. Okay, so you're in charge of the tipping at the racing post, so do you get to pick the races Obviously, that the calendar um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday sort of tell you anyway. But do you get to pick yourself what you want to study? Uh, yeah, when, when, when I'm doing a column, that's, when I'm doing a column, that's fine. I can choose whatever races I want, I want to tip. I'm not going to tell you that I will sit there on a Thursday and look at five Friday meetings and look at every single race to come and find a winner. I will, I will shortlist five or six races and I'll go into them. Uh, and if at the end of that I haven't found a couple of bets, I'm in trouble because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running out of time anyway. Um, but you can't look at everything, it's just not possible. Okay, so if somebody said, you know, was giving you races to study, what would be your absolute nightmare type of race? Uh, low class stuff, sellers, um, selling hurdles, that sort of thing. It's stuff that, you know, you know I'm, I'm not that interested in. You know, it's, it, you know, to me, it's got to be a lot harder than, you know, a load of horses with duck eggs next to their names, all running against each other and haven't shown any form for ages. Some people specialise in that sort of thing, but, you know, I like the higher end stuff, simple as that.